Hi everyone, so I'm here today to film a tag video. Now, I could be wrong, but it feels like a very long time since I've done a tag video. At least a couple of months. So this one is really exciting because it is the Cozy Autumn Book Tag, which was created by Lucy over at the Book Bell, and I will link her channel in the description box down below. Lucy's channel is absolutely fantastic. I've been watching her videos for years and would highly recommend you go and check out what she has to offer, including this original tag, which I think is great fun. So without further ado, you can kind of gather the sort of uh, vibe of this tag from the title. So let's crack on with the questions. Now question number one is what book always reminds you of fall or autumn? Now there's an author in particular I think I think of when I think of this season because it's who I sort of automatically go for in terms of recommendations of sort of slightly creepy autumnal reads and that is Shirley Jackson. So this is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson which is my favourite book by her and she was writing in the 50s and 60s so they're like they are historical, I guess, but um, quite modern history, relatively speaking. And there's something about historical setting that I also find quite autumnal for whatever reason. And of course, with the Halloween season, something a little bit creepy always puts me in the autumnal mood. I feel like this has quite a dark atmosphere. It's got a bit of a mystery and mysteries really remind me of this time of year. So all in all, it's a really good one. It is one that is just a go-to recommendation. It's about this young girl named Mary Catherine who lives on the hill in a like wealthy home with her sister and her uncle. The rest of their family died a few years ago in a poisoning incident where they were the only three survivors and ever since then they've been shunned by the rest of the community, by the ordinary people living in the village because um, they believe that her older sister was the one that poisoned the rest of their family and it's about the mystery around them. It's about um, sort of secrets and gossip and mob mentality and also the unexpected and families and dangers and it's it's just wonderful and it's so beautifully written and it will keep Keep you like on your seat but also just like completely captivated by the pros. So would really recommend this one if you haven't tried it already. The next question is then what is your favourite autumnal book cover? Now I couldn't pick between two but there are definitely overlapping design elements in both of these book covers so I feel like you get a sense of what I think of when I think of the season and it is these books here. So we have The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargreave and we have Circe by Madeline Miller. This one in particular is a more recent read for me, I read it this year and I just feel like this cover is immediately what I would think of if I were to think of an autumnal book cover, the sort of burgundies and the golds and the, the nature and the leaves and just the darkness. But that's also something that's semi-mimicked. Here we have a lot of nature and leaves and plants and the sort of, it's not gold, bronze, copper maybe? Maybe sort of like a copper colour we could call that. Um, but just sort of like the foiling contrasting with the black and the orangey colours and those all just make me think of autumn. Love both of these books. This one is obviously a retelling of the Greek myth of Circe which I'm sure you've all heard of. It was a very popular book, still is and rightly so. I actually interviewed the author of this one over my podcast so I'll link that down below but I think this is a stunning novel and equally love this which is a sort of prequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula about the wives of Dracula as um, imagined by Kieran Millwood Hargreaves. So they're both also retellings, which is interesting, but I love both these. They're so beautiful and even the backs sort of um, are reminiscent of one another, which I think is so interesting. And they're definitely some of my favorite book covers on my shelves. The next question is, what is your favorite autumnal drink? Now I am a coffee drinker all year round, it just depends on whether I'm drinking it hot or iced in the autumn. It's usually warm because it's pretty cold here in the UK and particularly in Scotland, so a warm coffee is much needed. I'm not a big fan of the ever popular PSL or pumpkin spice latte. I do quite enjoy a gingerbread latte if I'm picking up um, something from a coffee shop, but I guess that's more Christmassy, more wintry than necessarily. Uh, autumnal, I do also love chai and cinnamon, so I love a cappuccino with a bit of cinnamon in it or I love mixing a little bit of chai powder in my coffee um, to create I guess like a dirty chai latte and those are things that definitely give me autumnal feels, those nice like spices. Question number four is do you prefer to read late at night or early in the morning and to be honest both those are two of my favourite times to read. I quite like reading as soon as I wake up and I really like reading just before I go to sleep. I also listen to audiobooks in the morning quite often when I'm getting ready. So particularly in terms of audiobooks, 
I would probably listen in the morning and then in the evening I would read a book physically but I probably read more in general in the evenings that's like when I spend longer with my books because in the morning it's usually just a little half hour or whilst I'm getting ready whereas in the evening it's like something I settle down to do so I guess late at night but I'm also not a night owl like I go to bed quite early and wake up quite early so it's not that late. <laughs> Question number five is Halloween is coming what's your favourite spooky read? Well I've already mentioned this one which could definitely fulfil the uh, spooky uh, description but another favourite spooky read of mine I wasn't sure whether this meant it had to sort of have ghosts or paranormal creatures in it but I have to go for White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi which is an absolutely stunning novel and I do fully intend on uploading my top 10 horror creepy books of all time in October so if you're interested in more recommendations along those lines that video will be going up but White is for Witching will definitely make the cut because it's about this young woman newly off to university who struggles um, with a compulsion to eat um, things that aren't actually food so for example things like cotton wool or chalk and she obviously is dealing with that she's off also off to university like I mentioned and she is potentially falling in love for the first time it is FF it is queer there is a representation there for female female romance but it is a horror novel it is a creepy unsettling story about this girl and her family who reside in this house that has belonged to generations of her mother's family although her mother is now passed away and it's her her, her brother and her father and this house narrates part of the book so this house is constantly present in the lives of all three residents but particularly the young women who it feels attached to who it feels bonded to in the same way it felt bonded to her mother and her grandmother and because of that the house is very possessive and it's about um, the sort of generations of women in this family and the connection to the house and the possibility of witchcraft flowing through their blood but also the real life sort of world and problems and it's just stunning. Then we have what is your ultimate comfort read. Now when I'm looking for comfort I tend to go for funny. Some of my oldest and most beloved favourite books are comedies and if I need comfort comedy is an excellent place to go so I'd probably end up reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams or a Terry Pratchett book particularly Going Postal which is the Terry Pratchett book I have read the most frequently that I adore the highest and it is a Discworld novel from Terry Pratchett's Discworld series that you can jump into the series with it's the beginning of its own series within the series so if you've not read any Discworld before you can start with Going Postal and I adore it um, they're both very very wacky Hitchhiker's Guide and Going Postal and both are books I tend to reread on audio because when I'm looking for comfort I also often go to the old um, audiobook format recently however I have sort of in the past two years added a new sort of comfort read to my um, list, to my repertoire, which is Radiance by Grace Draven and I've only read this one twice so far. I already have plans of doing a 2020 reread, I, I read it in 2018, reread it in 2019 and want to read it again in 2020 and I love this book. This brings me so much comfort. It's actually a fantasy romance but the like sort of healthy depiction of a relationship between two people who are honest and on equal footing is so comforting for whatever reason and um, I just absolutely love it and I think it's quickly becoming a comfort read for me and I cannot wait to just dive in again and be wrapped up in these characters in this story so I've got some sort of old favourites and some new favourites. Question number seven is what is your favourite autumnal snack? I guess can cinnamon rolls, uh, cinnamon rolls could be kind of a tunnel, right? I'm not sure <laughs> what food is considered seasonally appropriate, but since I mentioned cinnamon earlier, I love cinnamon, anything with cinnamon in it. My favourite reading snack and my favourite snack in general is dried mango and that does not change though depending on the season. That is my favourite reading snack whether it's winter or autumn or spring or summer. So to be perfectly honest, it's probably that. Um, but if I'm thinking of something like a little bit more autumnal, maybe, maybe it would be cinnamon rolls but to us again I would eat them all year round I don't think I have a very seasonal palette I just like what I like we then have what is your favorite autumnal candle to burn unsurprisingly I also love me a bit of cinnamon in my candles I'll go and grab some of my candles from my room to show you okay so I have a bunch of candles in my room um but two in particular that I got last year and I'm burning my way through um now that it's <laughs> autumn again are from Grace and Honey which is run by Becca who is also a booktuber I'll link her channel down below I love her candles and I definitely want to pick up some more 
of them this year because oh, I ended up buying them for Christmas presents as well because I just think they're so lovely but I'm almost halfway through um, Mrs Weasley's jumper which is sweet baked apple and warm spices love that love like a little bit of fruit and spices mixed together, mixed together. That definitely reminds me a little bit of Christmas as well, but it's all sort of much the same, it's all cold. Um, and then we have Slow Burn Romance, which is rich caramel, cinnamon and sugar. So like I said, I like a bit of cinnamon, I like a bit of like spices, oh, it's just oh, so good. I also have a gingerbread candle, which I'm almost like at the very, very bottom of sitting on my windowsill in my office as well. But yeah, basically those kind of scents and it doesn't just apply to autumn, it's sort of all throughout the colder months. So autumn and winter, I kind of, burn the same kind of scents, but those are the ones that I currently have on the go. The next question is, when you're not reading, what is your favourite autumnal activity or hobby? Um, obviously, we're all just sort of like making do with uh, what we can uh, whilst we're indoors at the moment. I think I get a little bit craftier in the colder months. Maybe it's also the approach to Christmas and I quite like to craft gifts, but I'm currently knitting myself a scarf, so that's a good activity. And I do like to actually listen to audiobooks whilst I do that, so it's kind of like doubles up with reading. Similarly, I quite enjoy embroidery. I haven't started any new embroideries yet this season, but I do want to in the build up to Christmas. I also quite like baking in the autumn. Like I love making short bread. I feel like a lot of these things again apply to just winter in general like December, January when um, you're usually sort of seeing people and maybe having people over. I quite like doing things like baking for people coming over. But yeah in general I guess I get kind of makey in the autumn like I like to make things and create things <laughs> and actually I quite like writing as well. I mean I write all year round but there is something about like the dark nights that feel really nice to sort of sit and write away in so those are probably the things I like doing the most in the autumn. Then last but not least is what is on your autumn slash fall reading list? So I do actually have an entire autumn TBR video up on my channel where I go in depth about all the books I want to read in autumn as well as a TBR for the Femme Fan Tale, which is my readathon that starts on the 27th of this month, so only a few days now, and I'm so excited for all that. But probably top of both those lists is the second book in the Harp of Kings series by Juliette Marillier, which is called A Dance with Fate, and it's, like I said, the, the second book in her um, series, which began with The Harp of Kings, and I read the first book in the series uh, back in autumn of 2019, and I'm reading the sequel now that it's just come out in autumn of 2020 and I'm buddy reading it with my friends Lauren and Jill. I'm also reading it during the Femme Fan Tale and I love Juliette Marillia. I love her books. This one's set in medieval Ireland. It's fantasy and I'm just, I've been so excited to read it. I'm so excited to read it with my friends. So I just think that's going to be really, really nice. Um, but if you want to know what else is on my TBR, I'll obviously link those videos in the description box down below. But those are all the questions. Thanks again to Lucy for tagging me in this video as well as creating the tag itself. Definitely check out her channel. I myself would like to tag Tasman, Mel, Olivia and Molly. I will link all of their channels down below as well as Becca's and her candle shop and I would love to hear your answers to these questions if you haven't already filmed it yourself and just want to leave them in the comments down below. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!